Yo, what is up guys? Nick Smith NBA is back with another video. Today we're looking at LaMelo Ball. I have two stories for you guys. One story is on LaMelo Ball and a pretty cool trash talking story that I think is pretty cool at least. The second story is just a work ethic story and they both relate to the same team he faced off against. So that probably didn't make a lot of sense, but once you watch the video, you'll get it. With that said, I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys could drop a like for the video. It supports the channel, it supports me. And if you could help reach a thousand likes for the next video, that would be amazing. If you're new around here, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button so you never miss an upload. And if you want to follow me on Instagram to stay up to date to what I get up to, if you want to follow your boy, feel free. With that said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get into it. This is what happens when you talk trash to LaMelo Ball. Even at such a young age, I don't think that he had his highest performing game for no reason. I think I know the exact reason why. So obviously in Australia, where I'm from, the NBL league is the NBA equivalent of Australian basketball. The NBL has some really good quality players. Guys like Andrew Bogut, Paddy Mills came from the NBL. Currently they've got RJ Hampton and Lamelo Ball who could seemingly both be top five picks in next year's NBA draft. It is a league that actually has grown men, which is why a lot of 18 and 19 year olds struggle in the NBL and they do end up getting drafted like Terrence Ferguson, but their stats are really bad because it is hard to compete against grown men in a different country, different style of play. But Lamelo Ball is finding it pretty easy. Well, not entirely easy, but he is doing well. And this is because we've seen his rise and growth as a player. He's showing that he's able to fight through adversity. He's showing that he actually can compete at a high level. And he isn't a 15 year old boy anymore who shot from half court and tried to be cool. This is a guy that actually wants to be the number one pick. And so far, he's playing really well and can arguably be a top three pick if he continues this play. But the other day, I saw LaMelo Ball have his best performing game in the NBL. And I thought that, well, he looked really good. The way that he was playing, he can seriously go as a top three pick. But then I found out later, there was a reason why he played so well. Well, at least from my understanding. And here it is. Another player by the name of Quet Noy, who's a Sudanese Australian basketball player who plays for the Kent Taipans in the NBL. He's also somebody who's trying to make the NBA. He's a guy that has upside. He's a guy that can potentially get drafted. But at the same time, he's probably nowhere near what LaMelo Ball is at this age. Even though he is a bit older. He's 22 years old. LaMelo's 18. But either way, they're both trying to make it and get drafted. He actually also has a really interesting story, and I think he can potentially make it, but his story is even crazier. Noy was born in Sudan, and in the height of the Sudanese Civil War, his family fled the country. They first went to Egypt and then to Australia in 2002. In Australia, he averaged 9.1 points, 4.3 rebounds, while helping lead Australia to a silver medal in the 2014 FIBA Under-17 World Championships. In 2014, he actually moved to the United States. He enrolled at Montverde Academy, which is the same high school where Ben Simmons went as well. And he actually played alongside Ben Simmons at one point, very briefly. But as a senior, he averaged more than 19 points per game for the Eagles, so he actually had some upside. Anyway, that was just to fill you in on who this guy actually is. And he isn't a nobody, but he's also not the greatest player in the NBL, if that makes sense. Anyway, before the Cairns Taipans, who he plays for, versus the Illawarra Hawks, who LaMelo Ball plays for, Noy got asked what he thought about LaMelo Ball. And he had this to say on LaMelo. I believe he's not all that hype. Um, you know, I got another chance to play against him um, this Saturday, so it's no pressure for me. I truly believe there's no rookie in the NBA that can guard me so you know it's going to be another good game um, the team is ready I'm ready and let it be a show no again oh. you say you didn't play the hype yeah not like the American I don't think he's not as good as he is um, but he's obviously you know a basketball player he can play basketball but you know everything he does is going to go viral so it doesn't matter to me you know for the people that's going to watch you know they're going to see a star on the court that's why so this is another chance just to prove myself to everybody and just to become that star as you? Yeah. <laughs> the only star. Anyway, Noy ended up playing okay. He finished with 10 points, 2 assists, 3 rebounds in 21 minutes. But on the other hand, LaMelo Ball had his best game for the season. He finished with 24 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds in 32 minutes. And got the W. He definitely showed something else in this game. He showed why he was a top 5 pick, potentially top 3, maybe even the first overall pick. But he especially showed Noy why he was a guy that you don't talk trash to. Because you could tell that he was fired up. 
He was playing with enthusiasm, getting his teammates involved as he does, but especially on the offensive end, he was scoring, he was looking to score, and he was looking to hit big shots, which we haven't really seen a lot from Lamelo. but in this game, he showed why. Now, obviously, I can't say why LaMelo Ball had his best game for the season, but what I can presume is that this may have had something to do with why he played so well. We're never going to know, but at the end of the day, it's a pretty cool story. Now, this story came from two weeks ago when LaMelo first faced up against the Cairns Taipans. The second time he faced up against the Cairns Taipans, he was the youngest player in NBL history to record a triple-double, so we're going to break down both games. In the first game, the one that the story is about, Lamelo started off the game by trying to get his teammates involved, throwing some pretty amazing assists, and you can tell he wanted to put on a show. He obviously puts on a show every time he plays, but this game was a little bit different, and now I think we all know why. To start off the game, he throws a crazy behind the back pass for his teammate to get an easy layup under the basket. The second play, Lamelo gets a screen from Josh Boone, finishes the layup with contact, which was an and one. The next play down, comes down, hits an easy wide open three. So Lamelo Ball started off this game extremely well. And once again, I don't know if it was because of the trash talk that was said, or he just wanted to have an amazing game, but he did. With the end of the first quarter winding down, Noy finally got into the game. He got an easy wide open layup, so he actually started okay as well. But what was really fun to see was at times the two would actually face off against each other. And there was a matchup where Noy tried to post up Melo. Melo got the steal, ran it up the floor, feeds a teammate, splash. Then a few plays later, Melo runs it up the floor, gets a screen, there's no teammate open. Hits a pretty contested three, which obviously doesn't look like the best release. It looks a little bit off balance, but at the end of the day, it went in and he was focused this game. So there was no doubt he was going to make it. So overall, to start off the game, Melo looked fired up, he looked ready, he looked like he wanted to win, and he played very, very well. He was focused, and obviously, he may have just been focused, or there may have been some element of trash talk that affected him, and I think that's probably the case, because the chances of him just playing average compared to having the best game of his career after he hears trash talk about him, something's got to correlate, in my opinion. But in the end, Lamella was just playing like this for the rest of the game. Assist after assist, three after three, a few and ones. He just dominated. And now let's look at the next game against the same team, against the same player. No trash talk this time, but he was the youngest player ever in NBL history to record a triple-double. And he made history. He started off the game getting inside, feeding his big man down low for the easy layup. Towards the end of the first quarter, we saw Melo spot up for an easy wide open three. Then the next possession down hits a step back three, which was pretty highly contested and splashed it in his face. Then we saw Melo go coast to coast with a nice switch layup. To end the second quarter, Lamelo was sizing up his defender, dribbles between the legs, step back J, once again, hand in his face, it doesn't matter. He was off balance, but still managed to get it in. And that basically ended the half. In the next half, LaMelo Ball started off the quarter getting a screen from his teammate and then hitting a runner from pretty far out. And then later on, he gets his defender with a hezzy, drives in the paint and gets an and one layup, which was a pretty tough layup as well. Up and under, easy switch layup for him. And if you didn't know, the defender that he first got off the dribble, that was Nate Jawai, who played in the NBA too. And for those who don't know, his nickname is the Outback Shaq. He does kind of remind me of like a little version of Shaq, but yeah, he was good enough to make the NBA, so he knows what he's doing. Except for the fact that Lamelo obviously got him off the dribble, but yeah, we'll not get into that. <laughs> then midway through the third quarter, Lamelo Ball once again sizes up his defender, feeds his teammate down low for an easy layup. Once again, Lamelo drove in the paint. This time he actually finished with some contact and with the dunk, which we don't see Lamelo throw it down too often, but that was pretty nice. And he also throws it down later on in this game too. Lamelo throws a bullet pass to his teammate, and Noy, the guy that was originally talking trash to Lamelo Ball two games ago, he got dropped by Todd Blanchfield, who obviously is Lamelo Ball's teammate, and hit the shot in the end as well. So it wasn't really looking good for Noy in the first game or in this game either. But Noy does end up redeeming himself, getting inside the lane and getting an and one, which was a pretty tough layup as well. But the Cairns Taipans started to make a run. They get a dunk, a quick three, and then it was two minutes left and it was a tied game. They hit another three and they were in the lead and it looked like the Illawarra Hawks were about to lose this game considering they're not a very good team at this point and the Cairns Taipans were making a run. They hit another three and they were up by four points with a minute left. But this is when the game changes and Lamelo Ball steps up. The teams go back and forth but then the Cairns Taipans were up by three points. Sunday Deck was driving inside, he feeds Lamelo for the three who's trailing and he hit it, sending the game into OT. And also showing how clutch he was. And then it was overtime. And LaMelo Ball once again steps up. 
Lamelo will get a screen from his defender, feed him, easy wide open three for him. Lamelo will then do a quick hesitation move, get his defender up in the air and slam it down in overtime, giving his team a five point lead. And that was basically the end of the game. Once they were up by five, they never looked back. And the Illawarra Hawks had finally got their win. LaMelo Ball finally had his breakout game with NBA scouts there. The Charlotte Hornets owner, and obviously the guy that everybody knows, MJ Michael Jordan, had his general manager, Mitch Kupchak, go to watch LaMelo Ball, who obviously had an historic night. Bob Myers, the GM of the Golden State Warriors, also planned a trip to Australia to watch LaMelo Ball. And what's amazing is that obviously the Illawarra Hawks had Aaron Brooks, who obviously played in the NBA, but since Aaron Brooks has been injured for the rest of the season, Ball has averaged 22 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists in the 4 games since Aaron Brooks has been off the team. In addition, there's been many suitors and GMs that have been pressed by LaMelo Ball's work ethic. They've named him a gym rat. He put up shots at 2am Monday and again the night after his triple-double. 2am Monday, putting up threes, may have been the end result to why he was able to hit that clutch shot. Because at the end of the day, Melo puts in the work, which is the reason why he was able to hit that clutch three to send the game into overtime and eventually lead his team to victory. If somehow he ends up on the Golden State Warriors, which is actually really likely, considering they're playing horrible, they'll have a top pick, he could definitely go to the Warriors. Imagine that with Steph, Clay, LaMelo, Draymond, whoever else, Eric Pascal. This team could be nice. So it's going to be interesting to see how LaMelo Ball plays. These were just two stories that I found. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys could leave a like to support the channel. Let's see if we can reach a thousand likes in the next video. If you're new around here, hit that. I just like almost broke my phone. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And if you hit the notification button, it will guarantee you never miss an upload. If you want to follow me on Instagram, feel free. And let me know how you think LaMelo Ball will fare once he makes it to the NBA. And it's been your boy Nick Smith. I am out. Peace.